I own an Aria Alexa SXT and I also own an iPhone 12 Pro. And I thought it would be fun to do a comparison in a controlled environment, trying to keep as many factors the same and just see what the difference in the image quality is. So I have both the cameras side by side. Uh, just so you know, an Aria Alexa, a lot of people use the mini. Um, I have the mini, but I also have the full bodied SXT, which is a very exciting, uh, the big beast of a camera and uh, it's very heavy. It has a Super 35 sensor on it and um, uses detachable cinema lenses just like any other professional cinema camera. I currently own the latest iPhone 12 Pro. This happens to be the Max, so it's the biggest camera as well. I wanted to set as many factors between those two cameras uh, the same. I'm in a controlled room where I'm controlling the lighting. Uh, there's no daylight in here, so I wanted to have that ability because I really wanted to see what, the, what that image quality would be in a low-lit environment like I have. The factors that I kept the same. Um, I'm using the 26 millimeter lens on the iPhone 12, which is the wide lens. I have an equivalent or close to equivalent 25 millimeter Cook lens. It's called the Mini S4i. Its lowest T-stop is a T2.8, but in terms of focal length, it's pretty close. Um, shutter speed is the same on both cameras, 180 degrees or 1 48th of a second. 24 frames per second in terms of frame rate. And finally, the last factor that I could control was color temperature and the default color temperature on the sensor for the Aria Alexa is 5600 Kelvin. And I was able to control or manually adjust the color temperature on the sensor for the iPhone 12 to 5600 Kelvin as well. The only thing I couldn't control was ISO. The default ISO on the Alexa is 800. I left that as such. I locked down for the iPhone 12, the shutter speed to 1 48th, and then made the EV setting or the ISO setting as low as possible. From there, I adjusted my key light on me and on this side of my face, such that my exposure on the key side of my face was right on, not overexposed or underexposed. And then from there, I used a light meter, a light meter here, took a reading, and uh, from that reading, adjusted my aperture to about a T4, uh, T4 and about two tenths. So um, that is my settings that, um, that I could control. Um, I've got a key light here on me, on my face. I've got a side light, um, not very bright, um, an LED light, very small. Uh, on the right side of my face or camera left. And then I have just kind of a back a Fresnel that's do, you know, making a cut light across the back wall just to add interest. So what can we learn by looking at these two images side by side? What can you see? Um, and I'll talk to you a little about what I see in the images. I happen to be looking at a monitor over here. So if you see my eyes go this way, I'm looking at this on a Flanders Scientific color calibrated monitor, which is a really great professional monitor and I color grade with this. And I know that the colors that I'm seeing on this monitor are very accurate. So right off the top, the color is the first thing that I see on both sensors. Although the, can the sensor temperature on both is 5600 Kelvin, it's clear that the iPhone 12 is skewing warmer. I'm seeing more red tones in the camera, if you can see that. And by the way, I didn't color grade anything on the film. I'm leaving it um, as you see it is what's coming off both the sensors. Let's talk about uh, depth of field. Do you notice anything with depth of field? Because the sensor is smaller on iPhone 12, you're gonna have much more depth of field. Um, that being said, it's still both, they're both very wide angles, so um, there's not gonna be a lot of shallow depth of field in either shot, although you may note on 
the SXT or the Area Alexa that the background is slightly out of focus, um, although not very much. But everything's in focus on the iPhone 12 because the sensor is so small. And that's one of the downsides of a small sensor, depth of field. Now let's talk about the big one, in my opinion, dynamic range. The sensor size on an Area Alexa is much larger. It's a super 35 sensor uh, size, and so and it's slightly larger than that. Um, but it's as big as a film emulsion was for super 35 film. The sensor size on an iPhone 12 is minuscule, very tiny. You can have a lot of photo sites or pixels, the equivalent of pixels on an LCD, but the photo sites are much smaller because the geography of the whole sensor is much smaller, so they have to be smaller, which means they, don't, they can't bring in as much light. It doesn't have capacity for as much light as the Area Alexa sensor. This is where you're gonna see big differences between a prosumer camera or just a consumer camera and the big professional side of the, of the spectrum. Photo sites are much larger, and so they grant you more dynamic range, which means they can capture more light, or you can still see detail with little light being captured. So the, and what you'll see manifest in an image like this is the difference is in um, kind of, some people say it's got a more, the Area Lex has a more filmic quality, and sensors that have very small photo sites have um, more of a video quality to them. And what that essentially means is, is that because the photo sites are smaller, they crush the black. So as you get to darker parts of the image, it pushes it even further into the black. As you get to lighter images, it pushes it further into the white and you lose detail on the ends. So lose detail in the shadows and you lose detail in the highlights. And it looks more video-y is probably the best way to say it. Um, whereas when you have a large sensor with very large photo sites and you have a company that's dedicated many years, over a decade, um, into the technology of studying film emulsion and trying to render the same dynamic range of film on a digital sensor like Airy has done, um, you can really see that image quality. It feels like film and it's very much not film. It's a digital image, but it feels like a film, filmic quality. It's got more, um, I don't know, it feels like a natural type of image, kind of what your eye would see, um, more filmic. Uh, it's very hard to describe. When you see video, you know right away, you know, your blacks are crushed. Video, a perfect example of video is what you see on sports, live sports. It, to me is the very high resolution now, but it's just punchy, very punchy image. And you'll see that difference in the iPhone 12 and the Area Alexa. I hope you found this enjoyable. I know I had a lot of fun making it and uh, I hope you learned something in the process. So until next time, um, enjoy uh, making movies out there and learning cinematography and we'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.